Um, good morning. It's a really honor to be here today. My name is Li Xuan An. Uh, as Christina mentioned, I own and uh, I'm also a curator at uh, Gallery Plan B, this contemporary art gallery in town. Five years ago, my husband and I left our successful careers and comfortable life in New York City and moved to Vekur, Sweden, in search for a better life. And we're both very, very happy that we made that move. In January, I opened a gallery uh, in Vekur, in Söder, in order to bring international creativity and influences to this region and also to offer ordinary people access to high quality contemporary art that uh, traditionally has been quite exclusive in many parts of the world, including this country. And I'm happy and grateful to say that it's been received very warmly since the very beginning and it's brought joy and beauty to many people's lives. Giving love and bringing joy is the primary motivation for my work. I'm passionate about my work, and those who know me know that when I do something, I give all of myself plus 100%. So for the first half of this year, um, I work 12, 14 hours a day every day. I, most days I didn't have time for lunch, I didn't have time to make dinner for my family, I hardly had any time for myself or my friends. Uh, all I was thinking about and doing was building this gallery. Even though I realized there were personal sacrifices, I was not stoppable because I had a big purpose in life. I had a big ambition. I wanted to build the best contemporary art gallery in this part of the world. And also, people needed me. The town needed me. This work was important. See what the ego tells you? So now picture this. At the end of the first season, right before um, we were to set out for America for our annual uh, summer vacation, I was completely exhausted and depleted. One day on the table at my acupuncture's office, I had a very, very intense epiphany. I was lying there thinking to myself, Li Xuan, I talked to myself, don't you? <laughs> I said, Li Xuan, you, you've been talking about love for a very long time. How to give love, how to get love, how to love everyone, how to love yourself. Let me ask you this, do you actually love yourself? And to my astonishment, the answer was no. I didn't love myself. I hadn't the faintest idea how to love myself. In fact, I didn't even know who I was. But how could that be? I had very high opinions of myself. I was successful, I was talented, I was good at what I did, people enjoyed my company, I was fun, I was loving, I was generous, compassionate, you fill in the blank. There's a string of beautiful adjectives that I used to describe myself. I realized at that moment that all those things that I just said about myself were actually not who I was. They were images that I had of myself that I created, and ideas of who I wanted to be and who I was supposed to be. Those images needed constant validation from external sources from teachers, from parents, from lovers, from friends, from husband, from clients, from bosses, from colleagues, even from strangers. And that helped me understand why I always so worked so hard and was always such a perfectionist, because I needed to do good, to be good, in order to feel validated, in order to get that approval, to get that applaud, and to get that sense of self-worth. I got that from time to time. There was beauty and grace in the reactions that people gave me and the, and the compliments that they paid me, but they were never, never lasting. And it was like a big hole that I needed to fill all the time. And all of my life I've been running at warp speed with intention and willpower. 
And here, at the age of 46, um, I was running out of fuel. I knew on that day, on that table, that something drastic had needed to happen. I needed to tap into a much, much deeper well in order to find the energy that I needed to live the life I wanted and to the work, to, to continue with the work that I loved. A few weeks later, I was in California, and a, an old friend invited me to attend this special event, whereby a shaman from Peru was leading a group of people on a spiritual journey to awakening consciousness. And she said, I must come. It was extraordinary. I said, OK, what does that mean? That sounds a little hippie-ish, a little new agey, a little mm, even a little scary. It's nothing I've ever experienced. It's certainly nothing I would really know anything about. But I knew that I needed help. I knew that I needed some way to get in there, to get into the depth of my being, to find out who I was, and to learn how to love it. And if my friends thought that this would help me, I was going to try it. So on a beautiful summer night in Los Angeles, I took a deep breath and prayed that I was going to come back a normal person, that I wasn't going to go off and join any cult after, after that. Um, and hopefully Jesus was not going to be involved. Um, and I stepped into a magnificent home um, nestled in the uh, Hollywood Hills where this um, event was taking place, where this ceremony was taking place. Little did I know what I was stepping into was in fact an ongoing global movement to raise consciousness and in doing so, saving ourselves and our world. The experiences of that evening changed my life. What I learned was that I was not broken. I was not damaged. I was not sad, nor was I bad. The traumas of childhood, which in my case were physical, emotional, and sexual, and the prolonged agony over that trauma well into my adulthood was no longer valid or real. In fact, nothing that ever happened in the past had any more bearing on what is happening today. They were no longer and have never been who I was. They were simply experiences I've had. And in fact, I was whole and perfect in this present moment, just the same as everyone else. I also learned that the I, the big I, who I am, is not what I think, what I do, what I know, or even my emotions. The I, the true I, is very, very simple. It's an essence that is the same as what is inside of all of you. And that essence is nothing but pure, unconditional love. The desire for it, the ability to give it and simultaneously receive it, that is who we are. We humans are all connected to the same cosmic energy, and infinite consciousness. And once I realized this, once I understood this, I understood that we are all equal, that we are all the same. And there's no longer any separation between me or anyone else. There is no judgment, demand, 
competition. There's only sister and brotherhood, unconditional love and cooperation. Once we can really open our hearts to ourselves and to each other, there is no war, only peace. There is no sorrow, only joy. There is no envy, only support. There is no fear, only freedom. There is no stress, only infinite possibilities. It's a very beautiful thing. And once we realize truly how equal and same we are and that we are all one, we will no longer destroy the very basis of our existence, which includes our relationships and this planet, because all of that is also the same as us. We are one. We can talk all day long about revolutions and advancements, technical, cultural, in medicine, uh, in communications, and what have you. But nothing, I believe, I don't believe that anything can lead us to a sustainable society until we are sustainable in ourselves. No place is safe until we're safe inside of our own hearts. From now until the end of November, you're all welcome to visit me. As a matter of fact, this afternoon, you're welcome, uh, in my gallery in Söder to experience this universal love that I'm talking about. Because it is only this universal love that will lead us to harmony and true happiness. When we open our hearts to ourselves and to each other, when our actions stem from the sacred place of a loving heart, that is when we will experience heaven on earth. That is when we will experience authentic happiness, inf infinite joy, and true liberty and purpose of your life. I want you to just take a moment, just a moment, close your eyes and silently to your say to yourself, this underlying fear that we are alone, unsafe, and unloved is a hallucination. It is the confusion caused by the mind and the ego. The only reality is that we are all part of this magnificent evolutionary process and that life is nothing but this very present moment in which all is well. You are lovable and you are loved. I love you. I love you. And I love you. Please join me to make this rest of today and every day about loving yourself and all who comes in contact with you. The earth will purify and we will find our ultimate fulfillment and happiness. Thank you. <laughs>